What's up guys and welcome to my updated 2019 tutorial on how to play Biohazard 1.5. It's extremely easy, very, very easy. It's as if you're just getting a PlayStation game, you know, ripping a PlayStation game and playing it on your computer or whatever with an emulator. It's the same deal. Obviously we cannot rip this because this is not something that you can buy. Um, but it was put out there by awesome people who really love Resident Evil and who want to restore this. So this is awesome. If you're not interested in playing it yourself, at this before this goes up, I'll actually have my walkthroughs for Leon and Elza for the updated June 2019 build. So check those out. They'll be in the description below and in the pinned comment, as well as all the downloads for everything we're going to be doing. I'm going to provide everything except for the PlayStation BIOS, which I cannot, but it's the simplest thing, literally Google BIOS and you will find it. Um, it's the simplest thing, but regardless, um, I'm gonna show you everything else. It's extremely simple. And I'll even tell you where you would put your BIOS folders, uh, files in. So WinRAR, WinRAR is going to be the program that I'm gonna to use to unzip the folder that has the ROM as well as RetroArch. So you're gonna want uh, WinRAR or 7-Zip. I personally prefer WinRAR, they're both free. You go to, you just type in Google WinRAR, go to rarlab.com, which is right here on the screen. Again, a link will be in the description below. Go to Downloads, and then depending on the language that you speak or you read, whatever, you, you pick it. They have tons of them, both 32-bit and 64-bit. They have beta releases, but we want the stable release. So WinRAR X64 if you're on a 64-bit machine or WinRAR 80, uh, X86 if you're on a 32-bit machine. Um, you know, the Linux one if you're on Linux or Mac OS if you're on that. Whatever you're on, it's right here on, you know, if you're doing, if again, again, if you're an English speaker. The rest are version 5.71. Uh, if you speak a different language, you want to download from here. So that's that. You will click it. And it'll ask you if you want to save the .exe file, save it. I'm not going to because I already have it installed. And then make sure you install it. That's the first step. You have to do that. So WinRAR is the first thing. Next thing, you want to go type in Google RetroArch.com. Again, link will be below in the description. You want to download RetroArch. RetroArch is essentially like the library for all the different emulators and cores and things like that. So this is what we're going to be using. Um, that's what I used today when I recorded the two walkthroughs. So we're going to go to download. We're going to go to the supported list of supported platforms. So again, they have so many. I mean, look, Mac OS, Xbox One, PlayStation Vita, PSP, Switch, Wii U. It's crazy how many things they support. So you're going to want to pick the one that is the machine that you're using. If you're using Linux, download the Linux one. If you're using on a Raspberry Pi, if you're using a Mac OS, if you're even using it on Windows 98, you know? So for us, I'm using a Windows 10 machine. So you would click the installer if you want to install it to your computer and launch it, you know, from your start menu or whatever, or the download if you want to launch it from like a specific folder. So that's what I'm going to do because I already have it installed and I want to show you guys from a clean build. So I'm going to download the 64-bit version, which it's going to ask you to save. And look, it already recognizes it as a WinRAR file, which is perfect. So we're going to go to uh, Save File. Make sure you click it. And um, I have it saved in my Downloads folder. Uh, I don't know where you would save it, but that's where I'm saving it. So I'm going to now extract to RetroArch. And the reason why you don't want to click Extract here is because it's a ton of folders and files and it's going to be all over the place. So actually just extract it to a folder itself because it'll be a lot simpler. It's just better to do it that way because I've done it the opposite way, <laughs> you know, just messing around. And yeah, it's a ton of files and folders all over the place. And the great thing is both the, the uh, .7z file which is, you know, the one you have to extract and the RetroArch folder itself is not a lot of uh, space. It doesn't take a lot of space. I think together they don't even take a whole gig up. So we're just going to wait for this to download. I mean, to, uh, to extract. So yeah, so 
this is 553 megabytes when you first extract it without adding anything to it and this is only 178 megabytes so now that we got the retro arch folder this is what we would click to launch the emulator but we're not going to do that just yet because we're not ready in i mean it will work but we want to get obviously resio 1.5 so this is the link for the raw file just gonna refresh it this is the link for the raw file the 40 percent vanilla build back from 2013 that's what this is this is the thing that a lot of people got confused about when i last did my tutorial even though i showed the url and how to get it this is it i'm going to leave this in the description below they even have it for you when you download the patch and i'll, and I'll show that so download the raw the the raw file it's also going to come up as a folder to um to extract so it's downloading it downloaded okay um and now we are going to grab another link i'm going to leave in the description below we're going to download the latest patch which is dated june 9 june 8th 2019 it's called biohazard 1.5 mzd patch 0608 2019 30.16 megabytes download that save it and we're pretty much done with downloading things pretty much not just yet so retro arch is good to go i'm just going to go ahead and delete the, the the file that needed the folder that needed to be extracted and we're going to go ahead and extract both of these here so the bh2 which is biohazard 2 q and the biohazard 2 bin this is the raw file the vanilla 40 percent build which is from this particular folder, uh, WinRAR file, right here. That's what gave these two things. This has the same name as the patch because this is exactly what the patch gives you. So you could play this, but this isn't going to be the patched version, the updated version. First things first, I'm going to copy the doc, copy the bh.q file. And I'm going to copy it to my desktop. So now I have the BH2Q file, a copy of it. I didn't move it. You could move it, but I just copied it. We are, we're going to need that. And I'll explain why in a little while. So we're going to go into the patch folder. This right here is the patch file. It's a X Delta file, 17.7 .7 megabytes with the same name as the folder. So we are going to click on the other folder inside here called X Delta UI. And in here, we're going to click the X Delta UI dot exe, which is a program. This program is going to take that raw vanilla build and patch it updated to the June 8th, 2019 build. Again, you could play the vanilla build as is, but you want the most updated version. This is how you get it. So you're going to double click this. And it's going to bring up this small little program. So we're just going to apply the patch. So we're going to click open on patch. And you want to find it. Which it's in downloads. And you want to go here to the folder that we extracted that has the patch in it. And click the X Delta file which has the same name as the folder. Double click it. So now we have the patch here. Then source file. Source file being the original raw rom no patches included even if it is patched you could update it like if you have patched it previously you could use this to now further patch it but we're using the raw file so we're going to go back to the downloads folder and select the bh.2 uh, sorry bh2.bin double click it and now output file is where do you want to save the patched version of it and we're going to save that on the desktop with the bh.2q uh, so save it here oh sorry actually what you could do really easily you can name it whatever you want but i like to name it the same thing so i'm going to click it just so it picks up the name go back to desktop and save and then click patch and literally in a few seconds you'll see file patch successfully click ok you can now x this out and on my desktop i now have a brand new biohazard2.bin file which is the patch version it's bigger it should be i believe it is bigger uh let's see 
Yeah, it is. The raw file is 140 megabytes, whereas the patched one is 176 megabytes. So the reason why we need the biohazard.q file is because that is what's going to be picked up by the core in RetroArch, not the bin file, not even if it was ISO. I'm not sure why, but that's just how it works. And copying the existing queue from the vanilla build works perfectly fine to read the brand new patch version. So essentially, we're basically done. But this is the part I cannot show you, and that is to find the PlayStation ROMs. Google it, you'll find it. Now we're going to move on to RetroArch. So click, double click the RetroArch folder, and we are going to want to uh, double click on RetroArch.exe. Now, the BIOS you're going to want in this particular case is a Japanese one. It's going to be SCPH5500, I believe, or 5501. So just if you want, grab both. I think it's 5500, and it's a Japanese one because this is technically Biohazard 2. So again, once you get that, you're going to want to copy it into the system folder of RetroArch, which is already a folder made for you when you've extracted RetroArch. So once you get that situated, you got that done, you're ready to launch RetroArch. So I'm about to jump into RetroArch now. All right. So assuming you have followed everything so far, you found the BIOS, which is 5500. You've put it in the folder that you need to... Um, have it recognized, which by default is the system folder in the RetroArch folder, which is already pre-made once you extract it from uh, the WinRAR file. So once you have the BIOS, you're good to go. Once you, If you followed everything else, you've got the patch game. Again, everything besides the BIOS will be linked in the description because I cannot distribute that, but it's so easy to find. Anyway. So now we need to download the core, which the core is essentially, you could say, the emulator. By default, you do not have it. You don't have any. So first things first, we're going to go to online updater. By the way, if you feel like this menu is something you recognize, it's because it's modeled after the, X, after the XMB menu from the PlayStation 3 and PSP. So we're going to click A on the online updater. Go to core updater. I am using an Xbox One controller, by the way. And it's going to download an index of all available cores. We're going to scroll all the way down to do we see Sony PlayStation, which there'll be three of them. Sony PlayStation Beetle PSX HW, which stands for hardware. Sony PlayStation Beetle PSX. And Sony PlayStation PCSX Rearmed, which is actually the core used in the PlayStation Classic. So for this tutorial, I'm going to be using Beetle PSX HW because that's what I actually recorded both walkthroughs on. So that's what I'm going to use. It works best for me. You can try these two if it isn't working for you because I think these are good uh, good cores as well, but I'm gonna be using this one. So you click A on it, it downloads it, extracts it. So now we have this core available. But before we go ahead and launch the game, we're going to click load core you're going to see the core here, click it again. So now it's loaded. And one quick thing I want to do is um, go to, I think it's, I want to say it's input. Um, yeah. So we're going to want to go to input, which is on the second set right here. And I'm going to show you why in a bit, why we want to do this. So go to input. Scroll down to Menu Toggle Gamepad Combo. I like to make it L3 and R3, assuming that you have a controller that has that. And then I'm going to go back to the first set and click Configuration File and then Save con Current Configuration. So now that should be saved. What that's going to allow us to do is once we're in a game, we click L3 and R3 and we'll be able to pop out back to this menu without having to close the entire program. That's very important if you want to tweak settings and or, or swap games. So we're going to click load content and remember where you stored the patched file alongside the, the uh, Q file. So I stored it both on the desktop. So this is why I said the Q file is important because that's the one picked up by RetroArch. 
I'm not sure why the bin or ISO files don't get picked up as far as PlayStation goes. The Q files do. So that's why I said it was important to keep that Q file and copy it on over to wherever you have the new patched bin file, which for me is on the desktop. That's going to vary depending on where you put it. That's where I put it. So that's how I'm able to see the .q file right now on my desktop. So we are ready to launch this. So I'm going to click A, launch this, and get back to you when we get to the menu. And as you see, we've got Resident Evil 1.5 working. It's perfectly fine. It doesn't look pretty because it is running at the default settings that the core has. And that is exactly why I said to make that combo because I'm gonna show you exactly why. We're gonna launch the game and I'm gonna show you comparisons right now in real time. You see it's a little glitched on the screen, that's because it's not configured. And look, it looks like a real PlayStation would. Now, if you prefer that, go for it. Personally, I prefer to smooth my you know older games out, make them look better, because this is something not possible on a real console. And since we're not playing on a real console, why not take advantage of that? But if you're a purist, by all means, keep it. We just have to wait for this uh, intro to finish. All right, I forgot that they added the intro, so it takes a lot longer. So if you look at it right now, it's perfectly playable, but it's extremely pixelated. Basically how it would look probably on a real PlayStation, probably a little bit worse. So you want to make it look good now. That's your question, right? I hear you. So how do we do that? How do I make it look like the way I did when I was just on... Uh, my recording of it earlier super smooth that and whatnot again if you don't want that you're done you're good but if you want to smooth it out which i'm assuming most of you do click the l3 and r3 buttons which is exactly why i said to create this because if not you would this wouldn't be an option right now so that's why i said to do it before we got into the game this is where you go to save the state load the state etc we are going to go to options so a few things we want to change here multi-sampled anti-aliasing i'm going to put it times eight you can put it up higher if you want i do not like dithering so um well actually i guess you have to have i think you can turn off dithering i'm gonna internal resolution i'm going to put times eight texture filtering we're going to put it on this s-a-b-r uh, uh p GXP operation mode. We're going to put it on memory only and uh, dithering pattern off. I hate dithering dithering. I've never liked the look of it. If you like the look of it, everyone has their own preference. If you like the look of it, keep it on, you know, mess with it, whatever. I don't like it. So you could also put scan lines and all that stuff. I, I don't like any of that stuff. So um, I'm going to put this actually to 32 BPP. And I think that should be it. So now I'm going to re-click L3 and R3 from this menu. And look at the difference. It's going to load up real quick. 
Look at that now. Look at that now. Super smooth out picture. Looks great. Obviously, the pre-rendered pre stuff is not going to upscale, and that's kind of why some people don't like it, because they feel that it kind of makes it stand out more. And I understand that. I completely understand that. But I like my character models to be smoother. If I'm bothering to play it on an emulator rather than the real hardware, why not take advantage? So there you go. It's per it's working perfectly fine. I'm just going to um, warp to a few places just to show you that it's running the way as intended, that it is the you know most patched version you can see here, um, I'm just going to warp to a few different rooms. And uh, yeah, you're good. It's done. You've got yourself a patched June 2019 build of Resident Evil 1.5 playable on your PC, Mac, OS, Linux, all that good stuff. Uh, I will be covering it for other consoles as well. Not every console, but a few more. Because I'm sure there are some people that might want to play it on an actual console rather than their computer. So I will um, cover that as well. If you guys want to see that, let me know in the comments below. But that's basically it. That's it. You know, we've got Resident Evil 1.5 working. So all the links will be in the description below. Ask me any questions. Do not hesitate. Ask me any questions you have. Again, computers vary from person to person. I'm not super knowledgeable of every single GPU or every CPU or any of that stuff. I am okay when it comes to computers. I know enough to get by. Again, try the different cores if this one doesn't work for you. But for me, it works perfectly fine. And make sure to get the BIOS. It's not going to boot without the BIOS. You need that. It's that specific one. And put it in the system folder, which is a subfolder in the RetroArch folder. And if you downloaded RetroArch, it like installed it to your computer and you launch it off like your start menu or something, it will be in wherever you install it, the system folder will be there. You can always change the directory if you want to have your BIOS and say a BIOS folder, but system works perfectly fine. It's literally no different. You could dump all your BIOS in there for any of the systems you're using and it will work perfectly fine. So this was a from scratch RetroArch from a from scratch 40% build patched up to June 2019 Resident Evil or Biohazard 1.5. I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial. I hope that it was very clear, very concise. I was trying my best to just get it all done and um, in a way that you guys can understand it perfectly fine. Again, have any questions, feel free to ask me. Don't just tell me that, that I didn't show something or do something. Ask me. I'm okay with helping you guys. But I did show everything. Obviously, I cannot show where to get the BIOS. But I did show everything else and how to patch it, how to obtain it, how to even download RetroArch, how to even get the core. Everything was explained. It is so simple. I'm sure most of you already know how to do this. This is mainly for people who have never messed with RetroArch, never messed with any emulators, and really want to play Resident Evil 1.5. Again, this same damn thing could be played on so many things, and it's so cool. And I intend to show multiple tutorials doing just that. So if you guys enjoyed this, please give me a like. I do plan on doing more tutorials because it's something that I actually do enjoy doing. But uh, I'm not super comfortable with because I don't do them as much. This is probably like my third, fourth tutorial ever. But I like them and I want to do more. So if you want to see more, you know, feel free to leave some ideas, comments, you know, concerns below. And I hope you guys have an awesome day. Thanks for watching.